I recently bought a Sony X850 G TV, which is an Android TV, and on the Google Store I saw Retro Arch and figured let's give it a shot. And here we are with a full tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is go to Google Play Store, open your, your apps, get more apps, go to search, type in Retro Arch. There it is. And now I've already installed it, but where open is, it will normally say install. It is a free program, so go ahead and install it. Once you install it, you open it up. It will prompt you to make sure you've got a Bluetooth controller uh, synced to your TV. So if you're an X850G TV from Sony, that can have up to three items, three Bluetooth items synced. Uh, I'm unsure on other TVs. Uh, this should work for most Android TVs, although your mileage may vary and the performance from it might be different. Anyway, so once you've installed RetroArch and you followed up and you've installed and you've loaded up the drivers for the for the Bluetooth controller, you'll come to this screen. So it's nice and simple. From here, we want to go down to input, and what we'll do first is we'll set up a um, the actual hotkey binds. So we'll go down to hotkey, hotkeys, hold down the button you want to use to enable hotkeys. So when you're playing a game you'd hold this button and then it would allow you to use a shortcut on the key on the joypad to enable other other hotkeys. So if you wanted to uh, for example um, quit retro arch you would then set that to say Y so you'd hold down your hotkey that you've applied, which for me is the on-off button on the controller, and pre then press Y and that would quit from RetroArch. So you can do that for all your things that you need, so save state, load state, um, anything basically you think you may find useful on this. From there we'll, we'll go back and we will also tell it to uh, menu toggle gamepad combo. I have this set to start and select. So what this means is whilst you're playing the game you can press those and it will bring you straight back to the uh, basically to this menu screen on RetroArch with the game in the background paused. Um, very useful. If you don't do that it can be a bit of a pain to get in and out of the app. Uh, so yep, so that's definitely well worth doing and the performance from it might be different. Anyway, so once you've installed RetroArch, and you followed up, and you've installed, and you've loaded up the drivers for the for the Bluetooth controller. You'll come to this screen, so it's nice and simple. From here, we want to go down to input, and what we'll do first is we'll set up a um, the actual hotkey binds. So we'll go down to hotkey, hotkeys. Hold down the button you want to use to enable hotkeys. So when you're playing a game, you'd hold this button, and then it would allow you to use a shortcut on the key on the joypad to enable other other hotkeys. So if you wanted to, uh, for example, um, quit retro arch, you would then set that to say Y. So you'd hold down your hotkey that you've applied, which for me is the on/off button on the controller and pre then press Y and that would quit from RetroArch. So you can do that for all your things that you need, so save state, load state, um, anything basically you think you may find useful on this. From there we'll, we'll go back and we will also tell it to uh, menu toggle gamepad combo. I have this set to start and select, so what this means is whilst you're playing the game you can press those and it will bring you straight back to the uh, basically to this menu screen on RetroArch with the game in the background paused. Um, very useful. If you don't do that, it can be a bit of a pain to get in and out of the app. Uh, so yep, so that's definitely well worth doing. Go back and we will go to um, load uh, online updater. 
go into there and you just want to go through and update all these so update the joypad basically update them you'll see the small bit in the bottom just take a few seconds a few minutes maximum um, once all that's done and your retro arch is fully up to date you can then go back and go to load a core so for example we will go in there uh, you can see I've already loaded in a, a few cores here testing a few things out uh, so we go to download core and let's see we'll load in Nintendo Entertainment System um, <clears throat> Hmm. Right. Try nest up here. Eh? Now, at this point, you probably want to pop over to your PC, transfer a few ROMs, uh, which you will be able to get from various places on the internet that I wouldn't know about. Um, well, I wouldn't want to tell you about. Anyway, you get those ROMs, which of your legally backed up games, and you pop them onto a memory stick, pop them in the back of your TV, and now what we can do is we can go to. Um, directory ah, sorry not directory we can go across to this plus as you can see I've already been playing I've got no NES games loaded I have tried out the uh, I've installed the Super Nintendo Game Gear Master System Mega Drive and the Sega CD Mega Drive slash Genesis and Sega CD um, and we'll, I'll talk through a little bit about them in a minute. So we go to Man comes up, even though my, my USB stick isn't called that, that's what it comes up as, so you may need to look. Go into ROMs and then we will scan for the NES games. Now I don't advise putting too many NES games or any games in, into the folder because it slows it down to a crawl. Uh, I did the mistake of putting every Mega Drive game on there yesterday and it took a couple of hours to scan through them all. So I've basically done an all killer no filler style um, selection on the NES, uh, just like top 30 NES games that I like to put, uh, play on and have a mess around with. So, once you chose that that section there, go to scan this directory, there you go, super quick, starts off really nice and quick, if you've got a lot of ROMs in there, it gets to about 50%, slows the hell down, not very good once it gets to that, but you know, it is what it is, and it's just a, it's an Android TV, it's not super powerful, so, anyway, from there, we should have NES games up here, ah, we should, ah, oh, here we go. NES, very first ones. Now, um, with you just repeat those steps for all the other games, for all the other systems that you want to install, and then you can have a nice selection. You don't have to have any Raspberry Pi connected. Obviously, the performance will de depend upon the type of TV you've got, uh, but it's it's pretty good on this. The SNES stuff tends to have a little bit of um, stutter every now and again. But overall, completely playable. So we'll whip through a couple of games um, and we'll see what they're like. So let's start with Batman the video game. There we go. Man, I used to love this as a kid. I remember first reading about it and absolutely loved it. Now, looking on the back of the camera, that. <laughs> <laughs> My screen looks like candy floss, but it's actually not that bad when you see, you see it naked to the eye. Uh, so it is nice and dark and black. Although the, the Sony X850G does have um, a pretty poor um, uniform black, to be fair, which you can kind of see in that, but not so, not it's not as bad in you know in real life kind of thing. Man, I'm, gosh, I ain't played this in a long time. This looks great. This a masterclass in pixel art. I love it. Anyway, so to get out, start select. You can either close the content or you can press 
press B to keep rolling backwards uh, to see other games. So we'll try a couple on here. Um, <clears throat> Alien 3 was always a good one. Don't know why it asks you to run the game twice. It's a little bit of a strange one, but you know, it's uh, a little bit of a pain, but it's not too bad. So again, this is Alien 3 on the Super Nintendo. Feels like it could be a touch on the slow side, but that might just be my memory. My memory not serving me correctly. I loved this back in the day, fully completed it. It was one of those rare video games were the you know based on a movie but it was awesome. Core Design, the guys who did um, who created Tomb Raider. Yeah. Anyway, so out of there. And we'll be out and we'll go to Mega Drive. What should we do for the Mega Drive? Okay. Gotta be Alton Beast. First game I ever got on the Sega Mega Drive. Absolutely loved it. And yeah, I mean, it's not the greatest running game anyway, but this feels exactly like um, exactly like it did, does on the Sega Mega Drive. Can't talk about music sadly because uh, it does work. I've just got it turned down, so I can't actually hear it. Uh, oh, yay! There we go. Yep, yeah. feels pretty good. We'll have a quick listen to that music, shall we? Pretty ropey music, even back in the day. I don't think it's really. Yep, yeah, sounds fine to me, although I imagine it's not super accurate because the Mega Drive was. It does have a pretty great sound chip. Oh, we've got to transform. Come on. Is he going to fight us? Welcome to your doom! Welcome to your Alright, you've all probably stopped watching by now. You've seen how to set it up. But yeah, uh, hopefully you guys, have, if you get it set up, just give us a thumbs up and just... If you've got a different TV, love to know, and I guess other people would love to know as well, how RetroArch performs on all their Sonys with Android TV built in. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is completely playable and it's good for a blast. I mean, it doesn't replace the real thing and I'm super stoked, looking forward to the new Sega Genesis Mini. But yeah, thanks a lot and I'll catch you later. See ya.